Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are nailing navigation again. We are going to start looking at the different views in Finale. That's how you can view your score. And in the View menu, you'll see in the second section here, we have Page View selected, but there's also Scroll View and Studio View. Uh, this video, we're mostly going to be talking about Page View, but I just want to show you uh, what the other two views are. So let's go to Scroll View. And what you'll see here is just an endless scroll of measures left to right. Um, and that's uh, it's sometimes useful when you're writing music to, uh, to use scroll view. But um, more often than not, we do want to use page view because page view is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So whatever's on this page is exactly what's going to print. Um, so again, most of the time, it's, it's good to use page view. And then there's also studio view which is similar to scroll view in that it will be an endless scroll left to right, but we get these track headers on the left-hand side that will give you some information about uh, you know, playback parameters, volume and pan and stuff like that. And uh, that's what we can use scroll view for. Now there are some key commands to switch between the two. You can see that studio view is shift command E and page view is uh, command E. If I press command E right here, you'll see that I'm actually moving over to scroll view. And uh, this does operate a little bit strangely. First of all, Command E will always toggle you back and forth between scroll and uh, page view. So really, we mostly use those two views more often than not. But if you're in uh, studio view, what happens again, that's uh, Command Shift E and press Command E, it will send you to the view that was opposite of what you had just been viewing, which I, I find odd. So Let's see, I'm in scroll view now, so go back to studio view, and if I press command E, it's going to take me to page view. So it is a little strange, but that is how that works. Now, um, with these views, we I told you the page view is what opens by default in Finale, but if you don't want that, we can change that. So if you go to the Finale preferences here, in the first section where it says new, uh, down here, there's new document windows, and there's a view percentage. This will tell you what percentage you want the, the file to view when you open a new file. And the view, and in this case, page view is checked by default, which is probably a good idea. But if you really want to see scroll view as the first thing uh, that you view when you open a uh, file in Finale, just check that instead. And again, these are program-wide, so uh, it doesn't matter what file you open. Uh, it will open in the, uh, the view that you choose. And there's a bunch of different... Um, uh, page view styles, which I'm about to get to uh, momentarily. Um, but before I do that, I just want to uh, very quickly show you that you can obviously navigate around this score using, uh, you know, the, the scroll bars, which you're probably familiar with. The bottom one will just sort of move you left and right in page view, very simply like that. And the one, the scroll bar on the right will move you up and down as you would expect. Although at this view percentage, you're not really making much of a change. It is a little more useful if you're way zoomed in, then you can use that scroll bar to kind of uh, move up and down uh, in increments a little bit more. Um, the other way to to move about the score uh, is with this, I guess I'd call this page shuttle down here, we, where it says page number, and you see the number there, and there's these arrow buttons that you can click, and with that one right there next to the number, you can move uh, one page at a time, so page three, page four, page five, and the left button will do that as well. Uh, in addition, the ones on the end will send you all the way to the end, so that's the end of the score, page 93, although it says 92 because 92 is still technically showing on the left there, and then the one all the way on the left will send you all the way back to the beginning. And of course, we can actually double click in this field and type something in, so if I knew I wanted to go to page 15, I'll just press 15 and press uh, return, and it will send me to page 15, so we can navigate the score that way as well. The other way to move about this score is with what's called the hand grabber tool, which is this third uh, tool here. And this hand grabber tool will literally, you can just click, drag, and move your score around to put it in a, a place that's viewable that you need at that moment. The interesting thing is that we don't even need to switch to the hand grabber tool. Uh, we can use the, uh, the keystrokes option and command, and that will turn our mouse into the hand grabber, and then we can use the hand grabber tool that way. So you don't actually even need the hand grabber tool. And in fact, we can do this from any tool. So here I'm in the, in the expression tool, option command pulls up the uh, hand grabber tool. All right, so this hand grabber tool is basically uh, accessible everywhere, which has begged the question to me many times, why does the hand grabber tool exist? That is a larger question for another day. <laughs> 
Now I mentioned that there's different uh, page view styles, so let's take a look at that right now. So underneath the page view uh, option here in the view, we have um, the page view styles, and you'll see that book style row is what, what is currently selected, and, and again, by default, this will be chosen for you. Um, but there's eight different versions of the page view style in two different categories. We have book style and loose leaf style. Now the book style is going to show you the page layout left and right. So uh, if you open any book, you'll know that the, the, the odd pages are always going to be on the right and the even pages are going to be on the left. And Finale sets up uh, its files the same way. So this first page is on the right and it's sort of by itself because it doesn't have a page to the left of it as a um, companion. Page two and three are connected, however, as you can see, and it's sort of visually represented by this uh, this uh, fake binding here. But you can see that two and three is sort of one page uh, book style, right? Um, and the row is essentially telling you that the, the book layouts uh, will lay out in a row, which is why if you move left to right, you'll see uh, different page layouts one after another. We can change that to something else. In fact, if we change it to column, what we'll see is those layouts vertically now. So now we're just looking at the very first page layout, which is, again, just that single page one. But if we start scrolling down, we'll see the next page layout, which is two and three, uh, four and five. I should say the book style, the book layout is re really the proper terminology here, eight and nine. All right, so that's the uh, book style column. We can also use the tiled, which is a little strange to me. It will show you as many pages as it can on the page, in this case, depending on the um, view percentage. In this case, we're seeing six of them. And, um, but if we start scrolling, we will never see more than those six pages, um, which is odd to me. However, if you zoom out enough, you can actually start to see more pages. So now we see eight pages, but we can't see more than eight. And you can actually keep going and <laughs> pretty much see your entire score tiled all together uh, if you really want to do that. Um, and then finally, the last option there was book style current page spread only, which is kind of exactly what it sounds like. You will only ever see that one page spread. Uh, in this case, the page spread is just that single page. But if we move to page two, we'll see the page spread of two and three. What's interesting is that you can actually see in between the page spreads, I guess. So now we're viewing three and four um, and then four and five and, and whatnot. So uh, so that is the the uh, the book style options. The loose leaf style options are fairly similar, except it's really just showing you a single page. It's not showing you the, the binding between the left and right pages in this case. So it is slightly different, but the row uh, view will do the same thing. They're left and right. Column will do the same thing. They're upwards and downwards, although now you only see a single page as opposed to the, uh, the book style layout. And uh, tiled will do the same thing, except that, again, you don't see the page layout and um, uh, loose leaf style current page only will do just that. Now, if you really want to just only view one page at a time, this last option is the way to go because it will literally do that. You can literally, there's no other way to see multiple pages, um, which can be handy or not, just depends on, on your workflow and how you want to um, do your score. But as I said, book style row is what's set by default and I'll check that because that's usually how I work. And again, that can be changed in the preferences here. Um, again, you can choose whichever one you want, and that's how Finale will open every new file for you. Now, in addition to uh, navigating around the score in page view with the scroll bars, the uh, page shuttle option here, and the hand grabber tool, we do have some keystroke options that uh, will help with this as well. If you have an extended keyboard, um, look at the home, the end, the page up, and the page down buttons. Um, now those buttons will do some interesting things and there's some modifiers that will make them do even more interesting things, which uh, I'll talk about. So by themselves, page up, page down, home, and end will navigate your score by screen. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to press the end key and it's going to navigate to the right by one full screen. So home will navigate to the left by one full screen. And what I mean by one full screen is that if you look on the right edge here, you'll see that the, uh, the, the music gets cut off just about at the middle of bar 12. So if I press end, all the way on the left is going to be the rest of that bar 12. So it's literally um, navigating to the right one screen. And then home is navigating to the left one screen. 
um, the page up and page downs essentially doing the same thing, although uh, because of this view percentage, it's, it's a little bit harder to see, but if I zoom in a little bit more, um, you'll see that page down will uh, navigate me down a full screen, and same thing with the page up. So that's those buttons by themselves. With the command key held down, page up, page down, home and end will navigate by pages. So uh, in this case, command page down will move me from page one to page two, and then page two to three, three to four, et cetera. So that's page down, page up will go the other way. Uh, so back to four, back to three, back to two, back to one. Basically the same thing as these, uh, these first buttons in the shuttle. That's uh, command page up and page down. Command end will send you all the way to the end of the score. Again, it's basically this uh, right hand, rightmost uh, shuttle button, I guess you'd call it. And then um, uh, command home will send you all the way to the beginning. So that's the command key. I think I find that one a little bit more useful than the, uh, you know, navigating left, right, up, down by screens. We can also use shift home and shift end. And uh, these uh, key commands are a little strange. So let me see if I can explain this to you. So if you're sort of viewing a something that looks like this, so you've got this uh, page, I think this is page two, but you're sort of just seeing the top right corner of it. Pressing shift home will uh, basically s give you that full page now. So wh wherever you were, uh, left to right, shift home will kind of center you to see that whole page. Um, it will also do the same with shift end. So now I'm viewing just the upper right hand corner of page two here, but shift end will move me down so that I can see um, you know, the, the beginning of, uh, of, of, or the end of page two, um, but it will sort of right justify it. So now it's at the, the, uh, at the uh, e bottom right here. Again, shift home, since I had a little bit of page one there, will send me back to the top of page, um, page one. A little bit strange, but uh, if you get used to how that works, uh, it could be useful. And then finally, with the option key, uh, the page up, page down, home, and end, uh, we'll move the, the uh, score around a little bit more incrementally. So in this case, option end will move to the right just a little bit, as you can see I'm doing that. Option home will move to the left. Option page down will move downwards, and option page upwards will move upwards. All right. Now, the page up, page down, home, and end with all those modifiers, they will behave slightly different in some circumstances depending on the page view style. So there's four buttons, three modifiers, and eight different styles here. That's a lot of different uh, variations of this. I'm not going to go through every single variation of it. But suffice it to say, if you do want to use one of these other page styles, um, I, I'd suggest experimenting with those home end page up, page down buttons and those modifiers to see how they react slightly differently. But what I show you, showed you will definitely apply to the book style row to be sure. Now, if you don't have an extended keyboard, um, on a Mac laptop, you can use uh, home and page up and page down using function left, right, up, and down arrows. All right, so you may not see a, you may not see those home buttons, or the home and page up, page down buttons on your Mac laptop, but you can get there with function. And uh, let's see if I get this right. So function up will be page up, function down will be page down function left will be home, and function right will be end. So if you're on a Mac laptop, you can use the function and the command keys and all that stuff and uh, the arrow keys uh, to access all of those options. And so I think I covered it. That's pretty much everything you need to know about page view, about navigating around page view. There's actually a lot more to it than meets the eye. And uh, you know, if you want, you can experiment it with it a little bit. It might change your workflow in a positive way. So. All right, so I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video where we're going to start talking about scroll view. See you then.